I've been making isohedrons. I think that's what it's called. It's a 20-sided three-dimensional object made from 20 triangles. And I discovered there's a dodecahedron, I think that's how you say it, <laughs> that's 12 pentagons. So fewer but slightly more complicated pieces. I thought it would be neat to make intricate patterns in the pentagons then would turn the dodecahedron into an interesting segmented sphere. In looking at how to make one of these, I decided I really needed a new sled for the table saw, something that I could cut angles with on the table saw. I've got a fairly good sled for doing right angles, but it's always a pain trying to cut something that isn't a right angle. So I, I looked at some different ways of doing sleds for the table saw. My first thought was to do something with a angled fence that pivots on a single point. But then in looking at what's been done out there, I thought doing a sled where there are two T-tracks in the sled and it allows you to adjust the adjustable fence in a wider variety of ways. So I started by cutting out a space for a sacrificial throat plate along the saw cut in the fence. Then the next thing I did was to cut two T-tracks into the bed of the fence. And I started by cutting out most of the material of the track with a straight quarter inch bit. Then I cut the T-slot of the T-track with a T-slot cutting bit. With the things that I wanted to cut into the bed done, I could cut out the overall shape of the sled. This piece of plywood is a leftover piece from a friend's kitchen. <laughs> it's a very old, very dry, and hopefully a very stable piece of plywood, so hopefully it won't expand and contract through the seasons. I can free the sled from the rest of the piece of plywood. And I trimmed off the last bit on the shaper. With the bed done, I can start to work on the front and back fence. This is the vertical piece that holds the bed together once it's been cut in half by the table saw. <laughs> I wanted to cut out a spot for a vertical zero clearance throat plate in the back fence. Whether this is really all that useful or not, I'm not sure, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> then the same drill with the fence. I can free the fence from the rest of the piece of maple. This was a, a leftover piece from something I've been working on recently. I can't quite remember what. And I trimmed off the last bit on the shaper. Then you can see how the front and back fence go on. I can make the slides that go in the tracks in the table saw. On the last few projects, I've made these by making them a little bit smaller than they need to be, then putting a screw into the front and back end. And this allows me to adjust the width and get the piece to slide in that table saw track perfectly. But in watching a few other videos on making table saw sleds, <laughs> I noticed folks were just cutting this piece to fit in the table saw track perfectly and not making any kind of adjustment mechanism. So I thought I would try that and spend the time to make these fit perfectly. It was about the same amount of time as doing the screw method that I've done in the past. As the sled shape I cut out on the CNC machine, I was hoping I could just push the sled up against the fence on the table saw and get it square to the blade. In doing this, I checked how square the fence on the table saw was, or I guess parallel the fence is to the blade, and it was off just a, a tiny, tiny little bit, about half a millimeter over the length of the fence. So I adjusted that. So now it actually should be a little more accurate. Then I can attach the runners to the bottom. And it was working pretty well and I added some wax and then it worked really well. It didn't have any play and it would slide on its own. And I, I rounded over the tops of the front and back fence. 
and I put a small chamfer on the inside bottom corner of the back fence so sawdust has a place to go. And I did the first cut. I'm not going to use this for doing 90 degree cuts, but I wanted it to at least be accurate in case I did use it at some point. So I ran a little test. Now I know there's all different ways of testing this. This is a method that's pretty simple. You just take a, a piece that's parallel on both sides, you cut it, you flip one end over, and if the joint is still tight from top to bottom, then you've doubled whatever the error is. And it seemed to be pretty good right off the, the first try, so I didn't adjust the back fence at all. And also meaning my fence to the table saw is accurate and the CNC machine is accurate. <laughs> Now I can make the zero clearance plate for the bottom or for the sled. And that's just a rectangle that'll fit in the hole that I cut for it. And I'm just gonna attach that with screws. And the idea is that I can have a plate like this for vertical cuts. And then if I wanna angle the blade, I can have a different plate. And so the cut or sort of the, the kerf cut on the sled just doesn't get all chewed up and an inch wide after a while. I added the rest of the screws to the front and back fence and I can cut the zero clearance plate I just put in. I wanna make the vertical zero clearance plate and that's just a rectangle as well. It just has to be cut to the right size. And I can use the sled I'm making to make these parts. I had to make sure the screws were going to be out of the way, both for a vertical cut, but also for a cut that's angled. I can make the adjustable fence now. I have some oak that's been drying. It's probably still a little bit on the wet side. I think it was 12 to 13% when I checked it. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use it for now. <laughs> I can just get that piece ready by jointing and planing. Cutting it to the width that I like. I cut two slots in it, a short slot and then a longer slot. These will fit over the T-track and allow me to secure the adjustable fence in place. It turned out the knobs that I had were a little bit too big. So I decided I would just go with a bolt on the top for now. Then I wanted to add some clamps to this fence. This is where I, I drew everything out and I thought I had it sort of worked out, but when you actually start making things, you start to discover where stuff really should go. And I decided that the clamp really wanted to go about where I had the small slot cut. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking if I made another one of these, I might move the tracks away from the blade just a little bit and have the, the clamps in a slightly better location. For now, this should work. And I can test it, and it holds everything just fine. I cut out some triangles. I think at this point, I had just used my protractor to get the angle. And I decided, like the wedgie sled, what I needed was a wedge, or basically a physical angle, that I could use to set the angle on the adjustable fence. So I cut out an angle, 54 degrees, which is the angle needed to make the five triangles to make a pentagon. And I can align the adjustable fence using that physical cutout angle. And this hopefully will be more accurate and quicker for setup. So I wanted to actually make the dodecahedron now, at least a, a test version. So I cut some strips out of some pine and I cut all of the triangles to make the pentagons. I had thought about adding a T-track to the back fence and I decided not to. Then I found a reason why it really could be helpful. 
it'd be nice to have a stop for the piece of material as I'm cutting the triangles. And as I got going, I found I really didn't need the clamps I had put on. <laughs> I could just hold the piece in place with my hand. So it cut the angle pretty good. It was almost perfect. So with just a little bit of sanding on a few of the triangles, I could get the pentagon to go together without any gaps. Also, the tip of the triangle was getting blown off by the saw blade. And I'm wondering if there's a better way to have the fence interact with the cut so that there's support, so it doesn't break off the very tip of the triangle. Then I could just glue all the triangles together. So I need 12 pentagons. I think I made 13 just to have an extra. And I just used rubber bands to clamp the pieces as the, the glue set up. I needed to use the sled again, but for a different kind of cut. And one thing I wanted with this sled was the idea that the, the sled is a jig, the table saw, but then I could have smaller sort of sub jigs, sub, sub jigs <laughs> that fit onto the sled. So I can use the sled in different ways. So I wanted to make another fence and then a secondary stop that would allow me to cut the angles into the sides of the pentagons. I cut out another physical angle I think this is 108 degrees, twice the other angle. And on the edges of these, I wanted to clean them up so there weren't any little burrs or you know, anything in the way, but I also didn't want to change the shape at all. So I was careful to just lightly hand sand the edges. And I can use this angle to sort of figure out where to put the holes in this adjustable fence. As this fence was gonna basically be set at that angle, I didn't really need the slots in it. I just drilled some slightly larger holes, which would give me a little bit of adjustability. It'll always, for the most part, be in that position. And I can set that and cut the end off. And I wanted to see if what I was working on was really making sense. So I cut a scrap piece, flipped it over, and yes, it fits the Pentagon. So I got another piece of oak. I decided I needed clamps on the first adjustable fence to hold the stop that would then hold the pentagon. <laughs> One of the clamps wasn't quite in the right location, so I just moved it. So I can cut the end off of the stop. Then I can flip the stop over, move it back the right amount, Pentagon should be nested in that space. And I can add another clamp. And I was getting better at these and I was just doing the holes by hand instead of on a drill press. And I needed to make a second throat plate. What I hadn't realized is I had cut the throat plate in half. So now I had to match the holes from the first throat plate onto the second throat plate, which just took some care, but it worked pretty well. I can use this throw plate at the angle on the sides of the pentagons. I do need one side of the pentagon to be absolutely flat, so I sanded one side of all of these. Then I have to cut all five sides of the pentagons, and this worked pretty well. One little issue, and it may be something for a future sled, is that because I'm cutting towards the pentagon, so the blade is tipped towards the pentagon. I get the cut pointy edge of the pentagon sliding under the fence. And I'm wondering if mirroring everything in the other direction would work better as that, as that pointy edge would be up high on the fence instead of trying to slip under the fence. I taped everything together and it seemed to work. So then I glued everything together and I taped everything and then I use the spring clamps and I can sand. In the future what I like to do is try and wood turn this into a sphere but I think for now I'm just going to leave this as a dodecahedron. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks for watching.